Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Reiboot. If you updated to iOS 16 and you're looking to downgrade back to iOS 15, Reiboot can help you do that. Now, before you attempt any downgrade, you always want to make sure you back up your device. And of course, you want to make sure you also disable the Find My option on your iPhone in order to get the process working smoothly. Now, on the software, you have two options. You have the standard downgrade, which allows you to downgrade from iOS 15.6, for example, down to 15.5. Now, if you're looking to downgrade from iOS 16, back to iOS 15, you need a deep downgrade. Once you click on deep downgrade, you can select the latest iOS 15. It will download the software for you and restore your device to a fresh version of iOS 15. So make sure you check out Reiboot and their iPhone 14 giveaway. All the links will be in the description down below. Okay, so in today's video, I wanted to answer one of the most popular questions I get this time of the year. And of course, the next major update is iOS 16. And that question is, should I update to iOS 16? So in this video, I'm going to do my best to answer that question hopefully help you decide if you should update to the latest iOS 16. In this video, I also like to talk about the YouTube community poll because that's where you guys also provide some feedback here on the channel. And maybe this will give you a better understanding and hopefully figure out if you decide to update to iOS 16 or not. Now, as always, if you would like to stay up to date with the latest iOS news and to Apple software updates, of course, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you don't miss another episode now the first thing i always like to talk about is bugs right because a lot of you guys want to know is there any bugs any issues and if right now i do have to say that after using the latest beta for ios 16 i haven't encountered too many bugs or crashes on my iphone which is a great thing now one thing you can always anticipate is third-party app compatibility issues, right? You may have an application that isn't fully supported by the latest iOS 16. You always wanna make sure you check your app updates. I always recommend you go to your avatar and make sure you check and see if you have any updates available right after you update if you do decide to update because developers sometimes submit those app updates exactly when Apple launches the new software updates. So make sure you update your applications and you could encounter some app freezing, some app crashing, maybe the keyboard isn't working on a certain application and things like that it is to be expected keep in mind ios 16 is a new release and a major release for the iphone so just it will take some time for every developer to make their apps fully compatible and the best possible experience for many users now something i always recommend you do as well is head on over into settings if you do decide to update go into general and make sure you tap here into the about section because once you tap here into the about if there's any carrier update, you'll get prompted right here. You'll get a prompt in the middle of the screen and you can update your carrier settings. It's recommended, of course, to update to the latest carrier settings for better compatibility, network performance, and of course, performance overall on your device when it comes to making phone calls, right? So make sure you always check for carrier updates if you do decide to update. That's something you always want to do if you decide to move forward. Now I wanna go ahead and talk about AirPods briefly because there isn't any major bugs within AirPods, but I've noticed that sometimes Sometimes when I pop my AirPods open, the actual prompt here on the bottom will display zero battery percent, although the AirPods do have full charge. So when I go ahead and close it and pop it back open, it displays the correct battery percentage. A minor bug, something that isn't that big of an issue. Sometimes it just happens where it shows the incorrect battery percentage. But again, it is still the uh, release candidate that I'm running on this device pretty much. So yeah, hopefully that'll be ironed out with the official final release. And it is a minor bug in terms of Bluetooth connectivity and performance, I think everything is running up to par with iOS 15 in terms of connectivity. Now I want to shift my attention over to the battery because the battery on iOS 16 has been fairly good, at least on the last beta, beta 7 and beta 8. It looks like the performance on the battery, I can get through my entire day with no issues. But again, I'm running the iPhone 13 Pro Max, so just keep that in mind. If you have a smaller iPhone, your experience may vary. If you have an older device, depending on your battery health, your experience may vary as well but let's head on over to the youtube community poll because as i mentioned this is where you guys also provide feedback on how the software has been working and hopefully this will give you a better understanding a bigger picture right because everyone sort of votes here and we can get a better understanding here we have approximately six thousand votes this time around so far and a 36 percent of you guys are having a great experience so far 16 percent of you guys say it's okay but there's still some bugs keep in mind it's a new major software updates bugs will remain just scattered we also also have down from the previous beta a three percent of you guys say is very buggy previous beta was four percent so that's a good sign 
and a 45% of you guys are simply not running the beta. So out of the people that are running the beta, it looks like most of you guys are having a great experience with the software so far. Now, you can always come back to these YouTube community posts, as I always mention, and many users always comment in regards to their bugs, their devices, how they're performing, what bugs are they encountering. That way you can sort of get a better understanding if there's any bug that you see here and you don't want to encounter that bug, then you want to make sure you avoid the latest software update. But yeah, you can always come back. Uh, what I get from a lot of these comments is that many users have different types of minor bugs throughout the software, but the battery seems to be performing very, very well. And there you guys have it. Should you update to iOS 16, the official final release is always ultimately up to you, but the software seems to be running very, very well on the newer devices like the iPhone 13 and iPhone 12. If you ask me, I would say it's okay to update on the newer devices. Any device from iPhone 8 to iPhone 10R to iPhone 11, I would say hold off for a couple of days and uh, just wait to see what happens with the next release. And let me know what you think in those comments down below about the latest iOS 16 software update. Thank you for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.